stunning climax to last year's Crufts, the Airedale became supreme champion with that character of a bulldog as reserve. They both retired, so who'll win this year's title? Busy Earl's Court in London for the world's greatest dog show. Over the past few days, thousands of dogs have gathered here, each one hoping that they'll be the one chosen to stand in the spotlight as top dog, the supreme champion. It's the longest Crufts ever, lasting four days to accommodate the incredible number of dogs entered, over 14 and a half thousand of them. They've come from every part of the United Kingdom to be here arriving by car, taxi, and clubbing together on coaches, often starting in the early hours to beat the London traffic, to be here when the doors open. We've come all the way from Ireland and we're looking forward very much to being here at Crofts. Wouldn't miss the world. What? It's just the atmosphere, isn't it? I've been coming for over 20 years. And I love it. If I wasn't exhibiting, I'd still come. There's just something magic about Crofts that you're afraid you might miss something. Just something special about it. They've come a long way to Crufts, and so has Jenny Watson. She really is dedicated, and so is her German Shepherd dog. They're in the Obedience Championship. The dog is a big winner in obedience competitions. Jenny has quite a story to tell. Well, we've come to compete, but we've, we've walked down to raise money for dogs who are not as, as fortunate as the dogs that are here today. We're trying to raise money for dog sanctuaries. Um, you know, the sanctuaries who are completely voluntary supported and really who need an awful lot of help. It's been worth it. It's, it's just the, well, the thrill of it really has kept us going, you know, it's been super. So after all those lengthy journeys, the dogs go inside. Judging starts at nine o'clock, so the dogs are groomed early and settled on their benches. And already you can feel the electric atmosphere of competition in the air. The breed rings are judging, and in the main ring, the obedience dogs are working. I bet you wish your dog Three. behaved as well as these. Four. Of course, the dogs are the stars around here, but you do run into some well-known people as well. Me Yorkshire, I rather fancy a Yorkshire Terrier, you know. They've got a lot of the uh, bite in them, haven't they? They're smashing. Oh, yeah, I wouldn't mind one of those. I would have thought you'd have had a bigger dog. I see you with a Staffordshire Bull Terrier. Me? <laughs> Nothing bigger than me, you know, it's got to be the same size. I love a smaller dog, you know. I mean, I could be wrong, OK, but I don't think you get the same amount of love from some of those um, high pedigree dogs. Uh, the Battersea dogs give you a lot of love. That It's as if they know instinctively that if, you, if you've taken a dog from there, the dog really reciprocates in any love you give it. I mean, this dog that I got, he was a real heavy dude. I mean, he's big, he's powerful, and he, he could kill, but he's like a teddy bear. Because, and, and if I come in, it's like, it's just love all, all the time. Now, uh, about Willie, we couldn't bring him in here, you know, because he's not a show dog. And they wouldn't let us bring Roland Smith in either. We were very disappointed. However, they wouldn't have behaved themselves. They don't know anything, those dogs. There's an old Portuguese saying that a house without a dog is the house of a scoundrel. And uh, looking around here today, it's rather nice to think that standing at Crush, we're, we're surrounded by thousands of people and there's not one scoundrel here. <laughs> and there are certainly no scoundrels in these dogs because these are part of the rare breed, Australian cattle dogs. They earn their keep working cattle herds. They're tough, courageous and have great endurance. The Estrella Mountain Dog was used mostly to guard flocks of sheep and goats. An independent dog, but it can be trained for obedience. And the Leonberger is a cross between the St Bernard, the Newfoundland and the Pyrenean Mountain Dog. He's been a draft dog, a guard dog, and he's very good at tracking, looking for lost people. The Neapolitan Mastiff probably originated from the Roman battle dogs. He's a great companion, but I wouldn't tamper with him until I'd been introduced. How does a dog become supreme champion of crops? Well, he starts in a breed ring just like this, where he meets top dogs of that breed. Now, going best to breed itself is an honour, but it also gives him a chance to represent his breed in the group competition in the big ring. 
There are six groups, the working, the toys, utility dogs, gun dogs, terriers and hands. And the top dog from each group is chosen to enter the final, the selection of the Crufts Supreme Champion, 1987. And the first group is the working group, the largest group in the show with some nearly 4,000 dogs. And there are 33 dogs in this ring, all top winners. A variety of shapes and sizes. There's the giant schnauzer, the Hungarian Puli, a Newfoundland, one of the giant breeds, the Pyrenean, and on the end, the Hoverbar, the first time this dog has appeared in the group. And that's what it's all about. That's the trophy that they're competing for. Now, the judges pulled out 12 from the 33 starters. First to go is the bearded collie. A drover's dog from way back, still capable of working. And one of the four types of Belgium Shepherd dog, this is the Gronendal. Of course, a dog very well known to everybody, the Border Collie, used extensively on farms and seen more and more in the show ring. And of course, one of the obedience dogs that we see so much of. The Briard. The Briard. Yet another sheepdog, used by the French army in World War I for Red Cross work. So very much a worker. Oh, and our great favourite, the Doberman. Used on the continent as a guard dog, of course. Very popular in the show ring. This one needs no introduction, does it? The German Shepherd Dog, still a great favourite and used by our own British police all over the country. A good all-round general purpose dog. The giant Schnauzer, now this is in the working group, but his cousins, the standard Schnauzer and the mini Schnauzer, are in the utility group. He's been used as a police dog as well. Well, one of the biggest dogs that you'll see the at this show, Dane. the Great Dane. Remarkably large, but very, very elegant. And another the that everyone will recognise, the old English Sheepdog. Has a rather unusual movement, they call it ambling or pacing. And what a grooming job you've got there. Another of the giant breeds the St Bernard and one of the oldest too because it was bred at the St Bernard's Hospice about 300 years ago. And from the biggie to a small, the cardigan corgi, the one with the tail like a fox's brush. A lovely tail it is, isn't it? And the corgi without the tail, the Pembroke corgi. A very perky, bonny little animal this is too. Used, of course, for droving cattle, herding cattle, nipping at the cattle's heels, and you've got to be pretty nimble to keep out of the way of a, a great hoof coming at you. Looking. And these dogs, of course, are being judged by Miss Jean Lanning, who has a tremendous job on her hands here. And she's pulling out the Gronendal, the Briard, the Doberman, very popular that is. And another one perhaps? Yes, she's beckoning in the Pembroke Corgi. This landing has presumably finished with the other eight. And again, are the others, yes, the others are going. Well, they've done awfully well. 12 dogs out of 33, something to be proud of. But now, of course, she has the toughest job, a very responsible job. Has she made up her mind? Yes, she has, it's the Doberman. My goodness, the crowd reaction there shows just how popular that is. The Doberman and the Gronendal. 
How nice to see the Grunendal in such a high spot. The Doberman, who has shown really well right the way through. Grunendal looking up and saying, have I done well, Mum? Well, indeed you have. And there's the Doberman looking as smart as it has right the way through the show. So the Doberman, champion Salates Ferrers, wins the working group and the Grunendal reserve. I'm a little surprised the stewards have allowed this young lady to bring her offspring in the big ring, but she's obviously enjoying herself. On the other hand, this could be a clever disguise, because at this time we were due to have an appearance by the Metropolitan Police Demonstration Team. Here's the villain of the piece, and is he going to get a surprise? She was no lady, and the dog was no baby. And the chase is on, with the dog still working undercover. Down the villain goes, and he'll stay there until the handler calls him off. I don't quite think the hook was meant to go with the dog. And I think it's lost his nappy in the process. But that, ladies and gentlemen, is police constable Bob Davis in drag with his baby police dog Nils. And another dog and handler get their man. Another chase and another criminal to be apprehended. The Metropolitan Police have been using dogs seriously since 1946. The most popular dog is the German Shepherd Dog, and they always get their man. And this is a rarity. He appears to be injured. Well, police dogs are trained not to bite, and there are very few incidents where criminals have needed medical treatment. But all may not be as it appears. Don't have too much sympathy for the villain. Off he goes, and the dog takes advantage of the situation. This is really the only way for a police dog to travel. 500 years ago, parish constables patrolled with dogs. Now there are 300 operational dogs in the London area alone, and all the men and dogs here have police records. They've all been responsible for arresting criminals. Nearly 1,800 dogs competed in the utility group, and 18 different breeds are on parade here, each one anxious to win the group. In other countries, this is called the non-sporting group, the idea being that these breeds are considered pets, but many of these breeds have worked for their living and still do. As you can see, this utility group has a great variety. And after an examination, the judge, Bill Jobson, who will probably call out half a dozen dogs to examine again, and then from these, he'll no choose his best of group and reserve. Pulled out the chow, the Dalmatian. He's pulled out the Kaesong. The Japanese Akita, the Kaesong. Going towards the Poodles and the Toy Poodle. The miniature Schnauzer, the Toy Poodle. And he's pulled out the Shih Tzu. And that makes a total of seven Shih dogs Tzu. for Bill Jobson to examine again. Starting with the Chow Chow, it has to have a compact body with a shining coat and a dignified, distant bearing. In China at one time, it was a working dog and it guarded herds and hunted sable. It was also used for pulling heavy loads harnessed to a cart. The first Chow Chow arrived in this country about 200 years ago, a dog with some history. The Dalmatian and the judge is looking for a strong, active, muscular, well-balanced dog with a good temperament. And this dog has these points. The head is quite long and the nose is black in the black-spotted dogs. You can also have brown or liver-spotted dogs. No one can agree about the origin of the Dalmatian. Some say he comes from the Orient. Some say gypsies took the dog from India into Dalmatia, which is now a part of Yugoslavia. Very elegant dog, this one. This is Japan's national dog, the Akita. And centuries ago, it almost became extinct because it was used for dog fighting. And only a few dogs survived the fights. Today, it's used in Japan as a guard dog and a police dog. It needs a lot of exercise and it's getting plenty here. The Akita. The Kaesong, the Dutch barge dog, a very handsome dog with an alert expression. It has a luxurious coat and, as you can see, a richly plumed tail. And this dog has face markings as though he wears spectacles. A nice show. And after that performance, well, this Kaesong deserves a reward and gets it. The miniature Schnauzer, a robust and stocky dog. The bristly moustache and whiskers and bushy eyebrows give the face a lot of character. It's a muscular dog, despite its size, and its coat is bushy and wiry. 
very affectionate and obedient. Makes a very alert guard dog. A very popular miniature schnauzer. The smallest of the three varieties of poodle, the toy poodle. And this is a well-known champion. Very alert and active little dog, elegant and proud. And look at this one go. Bill Jobson, the judge, is a poodle breeder himself. He's going to be impressed by this movement. Looks as though he could go all day at this pace. The sacred dog of China, the Shih Tzu. The judge wants an energetic and alert dog with a haughty carriage, which this one has. There are so many legends about this dog. Certainly the Chinese were reluctant to let it leave their country and it didn't make an appearance in Britain until 1930. A sprightly movement. That's what's called for, the Shih Tzu. Well, Bill Jobson, the judge of the utility group, has been showing dogs since he was 10 years old and he's owned 39 different breeds, so he knows his dogs. And he goes past his final seven, the Akita and the Quezon, showing lovely there, beautifully. Nietzsche Schnauzer and the Toy Poodle, Shih Tzu, beautiful expression on that Shih Tzu. Has he made up his He has, it's the Shih Tzu. The Shih Tzu's got the group, the winner of the utility group and the Toy Poodle is reserved. And it's the Shih Tzu and the Toy Poodle, a very popular duo for the utility group. Two beautiful champions there, and the Shih Tzu now goes forward to the final six at Crufts. The big show rings at Crufts are really for the dedicated breeders of pedigree dogs, but the 196 trade stands here cater for every type of dog. Pet dog, working dog, show dog, you can buy anything. Dog books by the hundred on all the breeds and on training and the habits of the domesticated dog. Wear one of these t-shirts and it'll be a constant reminder to everybody that you've been to Crufts. If you don't actually win a rosette fairly and squarely in the ring, you can always buy one. At the end of the day, your dog doesn't have to sleep on an old blanket. He can have a thermal pet bed or a bean bag. And what will the well-dressed dog wear this season? Here are coats for the fashion-conscious canine. And there's dog food, tons and tons of it. In tins, in packets, all shapes and sizes, dog biscuits and biscuit meal to tickle the dog's palate. And it's all done in the best possible taste. The toy group with over 1,800 dogs and the 20 best of breed from the entry are here now for the judge, Mr. Jack Mitchell, to go over. And they make a most attractive lineup. These little dogs, little in size but tremendous in character, all showing hard for their handlers. And ending up on his traditional red box, the Yorkshire Terrier. Now the judge has pulled out six dogs for final examination. This is the Bichon Frise, and it's very interesting because in the 1986 top dog list. This dog was second. So a dog really to be reckoned with, and we must watch this one's progress through. A pure white dog with corkscrew curl coat and a highly, highly earnest expression. And even more interesting that in the same list, number three was this Griffon Brizelois. So we've got two of the top dogs battling it out in this group. Very intelligent. The Griffon Another comes in two coats, the rough, which this is, and a smooth. Two coats, They're highly intelligent little dogs, and they came to this country coat. round about the end of the last century. Really a Having a look round to see that all is well. The Lauchen, a little lion dog, originated in the Mediterranean. This one came from Aberdeen. He's intelligent and affectionate, and the breed dates back to the 13th century. He's called the lion dog because of the way he's clipped out. And in the 15th century, the ladies of the court would use the clippings as a hot water bottle. One of the glamorous dogs from the toy group, the Maltese. Pure white, although occasionally there are slight lemon markings. 
probably the oldest toy in the whole group. It was mentioned in writings uh, as long ago as Queen Elizabeth the first time. A charming, sweet-tempered little breed. And the Pekingese and the judge, Mr. Jack Mitchell, has bred many champions of this breed. Don't let anybody tell you that Another this is just a lap dog. It's a tough little Pekingese character. Really it was first introduced so from the Summer Palace in Peking in around about 1860. Five were brought home and others followed. And the breed is now high on the popularity list because there were 184 Pekingese entered at Crufts this year. It has that rolling gait on the front. The Pomeranian, certainly a descendant of the German Spitz breeds, and the early 19th century Poms came from Central Europe, Italy and France. Originally, they were much bigger. They weighed something like 15 to 20 pounds. But these days, it's more four to five and a half pounds. It was interesting that in 1891, we had 14 Pomeranians at Crufts. This year, there were 91. And now one last concentrated look by the judge. It's a moment of extreme tension for the exhibitors because everything rests on what happens in the next few minutes. A look at the Maltese who is looking super. Another examination of the Pekingese. And it's the Bichon Frise. Followed by the Griffon Bruxellois, so it's the Bichon, best toy, and the Griffon Bruxellois, the reserve. The Bichon Frise, with a name bigger than he is, champion and Irish champion, Tio Pepe Mad Louis of Pamplona. Three thousand one hundred and fifty-four dogs entered the Gum Dog Group. They're represented by these twenty-four best of breed winners. These retrievers, pointers, setters, and spaniels all work with the gun, but they do different jobs. They accompany hunters after feathered game. Some of these dogs here are just show dogs, but many are working dogs as well, and they're all sporting dogs. The judge, Bill Parkinson, now calling out his final selection, the Gordon Setter. His first the out. He may pick out six or seven dogs, the curly coat retriever, the flat coated retriever. Joining the select group the in the American middle, Cocker. the American Cocker Spaniel and the, the English, English Springer Spaniel. Spaniel. Well, he's got six dogs in the center. Fine gun dogs, all of them. Full of stamina, like a heavyweight hunter. And the Gordon Setter, examined first, a Scottish field dog, intelligent and dignified, not as colourful and glamorous overall as some of the other setters, but I love that rich red colour markings mixed with the deep shining cold black of the coat. On the move, a steady dog, plenty of drive from the back legs, great hunter. The Irish Setter, I do like this Irish Setter, she's a show champion and beat 328 Irish Setters to gain the Best of Breed Award. It was the top breed entry in the Gun Dog Group. I think she teams with quality, very affectionate dogs, beautiful rich chestnut colour. Very popular show dog today, started off as a hunting dog. Oh, she does look good. I like the way she uses her neck and holds her head proudly. A dog for the open countryside, but very much at home here at Crafts. The curly coat retriever, the curly -coated and retriever this dog was the top winning gun dog at championship shows last year, strongly tipped to win this group. The main characteristic of this breed is the coat. It's a mass of crisp, small curls all over, rather like an Astrakhan coat. It's to be strong, active, and to cover the ground with drive. Uh, he's a little unsettled in movement, actually, at the moment. I don't know if he's upset by something. Yes, he is upset, though. Now, this could cost him dearly for the top placing in this gun dog group. Animal, the flat-coated retriever. Flat retriever, and this one's as black as they come, but it's positively dreaming with condition. It should be a bright, active dog with an intelligent expression. It's got a kindly temperament. 
one of the lighter of the retrievers, a racy dog, but very powerful. Free-flowing movement makes this dog a popular show winner. Of course, it's been about a very long time. Tail carried gaily, and this dog has bags of energy. He's never stopped wagging his tail. The American Cocker Spaniel, now a favourite show dog in this country, like the English Cocker, it's a merry dog, and this breed is also a worker with the gun. It's not just a fancy show dog. Obviously, the United States as a retriever, particularly for small birds like quail. It's supposed to cover the ground well, and this one does. In fact, she's she's going very well here, and this could win her a placing. This is just what the judge wants: style and pace. A real athlete well under this coat. The, the English, English Springer Spaniel. Springer Spaniel it's got a friendly, Miller happy disposition. The coat is close, straight, and weather resisting. And of course, it's got a moderate feathering on the ears and body. The English Springer Spaniel is a popular working dog because it's so versatile. It hunts, it points out its prey, it retrieves, it works well in water and on land. This one's working well on land. Great condition, so important for a gun dog. Bill Parkinson is the gun dog group judge and he knows what it's like to be in the winning spotlight. He won best in show at Crufts with a pointer in 1958. Who would he choose out for? Winner of the group and the reserve. Going towards the flat coat. And the flat coat has won it. The flat coat has won the group, and the English Springer Spaniel Reserve, wondering not quite where to stand at the moment. But the flat coated retriever and the English Springer Spaniel do a parade in front of the spectators. Someone's told that flat coat he's won the group. What a happy dog. And so is that English Springer Spaniel, for good reason. Well, he is a retriever. Gun dogs, of course, don't only appear in the show ring. Clubs running training sessions can be found all over the country now, and these can be fun socially, but above all, they help the dog to do the things he was bred for. And these springers are working down the field, looking in the undergrowth, trying to spring game for the guns. Look at the enthusiasm. And there's a gun fired and a dummy sent, and the dogs freeze, completely under control. They won't go until they're told. There goes the first one, skidding to a halt. Look at that. Racing back. All the others want to do it as well, but look, there they are, standing there waiting. And now this is a difficult exercise because dummies are being thrown in opposite directions and the dogs are going to be sent through each other's ranks. There goes the Black Labrador and the first Springer. Tails never stop them. Back to their respective owners. And this yellow Labrador broke a leg as a puppy and has a plate and four screws, known now to his friends as Barry Sheen. The joy of this is to see the dogs doing what they were bred for and doing it with such enthusiasm and happiness. And some of these are quite young dogs. An absolutely marvelous display. How nice to see dogs doing the things naturally. Crufts has a royal visitor, His Royal Highness Prince Michael of Kent, accompanied by the outgoing Chairman of Crufts, Sir Dudley Forward. Prince Michael is the President of the Kennel Club and particularly takes a keen interest in the Kennel Club's junior organisation, which was launched last year and now has a membership of 1,300. Prince Michael makes the presentations to the winners of the Junior of the Year competition. And young people are in evidence just everywhere here at Crufts. Some just cuddle their dogs, and some work their dogs. This is the Kennel Club Junior Organization obedience section. And look at the concentration. Just as much as any adult, oblivious of everything that's going on around him. And this young lady actually won the obedience competition for the youngsters. And you can see why. 
Some do it with humour. And some with a bit of tension. And there are awards to be won too. Now Crufts also hosts the International Junior Handling Competition, which includes the top 10 young handlers from countries as far apart as Australia, Finland and America. Now here's the handling that is being judged, not the dogs. It's the ability to show the dog to perfection and make the most of it. And these youngsters are handling dogs which they met only a quarter or half an hour before the competition. So they have to establish the rapport with the dog very, very quickly indeed. And they're doing it extremely well. Now all this is going on under the eagle eye of the American judge, herself a very successful exhibitor and a very experienced handler. children concentrating very hard and all I can say is the adults later on had better look to their laurels back to the competition for supreme champion we've had four group winners already the Doberman won the working group a very popular winner the utility group winner was the Shih Tzu a very handsome specimen and very dignified the Bichon Frise won the toy group professionally and expertly handled never put a foot wrong and the gun dog group winner, the flat-coated retriever, in tremendous form and condition, and there's the terrier and hound group winners yet to come. And the terrier group with 23 breeds and nearly 1,500 entries. Now, if anybody says terrier, I think we, we imagine a stereotype, but in fact there are so many different shapes and sizes in this group. Little ones, big ones, long legs, different coats, and lovely all they all are. All and shapes and colours and types. 24 terriers. The Scottish terrier, the Celium and the Sky. And last of all, the Glen of Imal, a rare breed. Now the judge is pulling out the, the Border Terrier the smooth fox terrier. There's the smooth coming into line. The Lakeland. The Lakeland. And are we having any more? There's one more to come. The and that's the Celium. So, so six dogs ready. First of all, the Border Terrier. Now, I think this is a grand little no-nonsense dog. It has to have an e a head like a, an otter, which is very difficult to say. A very harsh coat. And he has to be built like a hunter so that he can follow a horse. The Smooth Fox Terrier, a very clear-cut dog, never very fashionable, and I don't know why. I think it's very attractive. It has that alert look, the tail up. Fashioned like a horse, covering the ground. He's used by huntsmen on many an occasion and presents a very clear-cut appearance. And the wire fox, now this is one to look at very carefully because he was number four in the top winning dogs of 1986. Very much a British-made dog. Harsh, wiry coat. Look at him stepping out there. And even more exciting, the Kerry Blue, which was the top winning dog of 1986, so one to watch most carefully. Very strong looking dog. And he has a different coat from any other of the terrier breeds. And a grand little chap, the Lakeland Terrier. Bred originally purely for work, nobody minded what he looks like. But look at him now first appeared at a dog show in 1928, so he's been around for some time. And he's followed by the Celium, the white dog, or white with lemon, brown or badger markings, developed by a Captain Edwards who lived at Celium House near Halford West in Wales, hence the name. So there are our six. 
and our judge, Mrs. Mary Blake, calls out the Wire Fox Terrier, winning the Terrier group, the Wire Fox Terrier and our lovely Border Terrier as reserve. Grand little dogs. And look at the spirit. Real terriers. Don't let anybody tell you that show dogs aren't real dogs. For heaven's sake, hang on to the leads. Full of beans. Such terrier spirit. Real little terriers. And indeed, the handlers picked pick the wire fox terrier up, and I think it's a jolly good idea. And there he is, making his speech of thanks for the cup. Champion Killick of the Mess, the wire-haired fox terrier. The hound group had 24 breeds at the show. Mrs Ann Argyle, the judge, is now choosing her final six or seven. She has an, un an enviable task to examine some excellent dogs here and an unenviable job of sorting out just one winner with the reserve. And she's pulling them out and the Whippet is her seventh dog in the final lineup. So we now look again at seven dogs for the Hound Group. There's the Whippet. A lovely lineup. This is Argyle. Starts with the Afghan Hound, the dog that went into the ark with Noah. No, no, not this one, but one of his ancestors may have done, that's the legend. The judge wants a tall, impressive and dignified dog with a head held proudly. It has an oriental expression with a certain keen fierceness. And the standard of points calls for a smooth and springy movement. And this one, I think, must have read that standard of points. A style of high order, certainly. Beautifully textured coat on the Afghan. The Basset Hound, some, sometimes said to be half a dog in height but twice a dog in length. There's a certain amount of loose skin around the head which forms a wrinkle across the eye. It has low long ears and strong jaws, a hound of some substance. French hunting hound and it was first brought to this country in 1866 when a bit of bloodhound was introduced into the breeding. Dog of great character. The Borzoi, a really graceful dog, this one. Dignified and elegant. The coat is a silky texture, the tail is long and well carried low in a graceful curve. The Tsars of Russia formed a kennel of Borzois in 1613 and one of them had 150 dogs out hunting the wolf. Very graceful dog. The long-haired Dachshund, long, low, bold and intelligent. That's the basic description of the Dachshund. Long, muscular neck. This is a strong dog. The body must be clear of the ground to allow free movement. This is the long-haired variety. The hair is soft and straight. Longest under the neck or under the body and behind the legs. Mischievous dog, this one, makes a very affectionate companion, moving nicely here. The deer hound resembles a rough-coated greyhound, and it has to look as though it has speed, power and endurance. It's very anxious to please its owner, so it's fairly easy to train. An upstanding dog, this one, and it moves with a long stride. It's said that the Deerhound hasn't changed much in the last thousand years. The royal dog of Scotland, the Deerhound. The Greyhound, a strongly built, upstanding hound with a long head and neck, a deep chest, a hound of great quality. Often seen in Egyptian engravings and sculptures going back 5,000 years. Brought to Europe by traders, probably following their caravans. Moving, it has a free stride covering the ground at speed. The Whippet. Well, our judge, Anne Argyle, has owned 11 champion Whippets, so she knows the breed well. Strength with elegance, that's how this breed is described. It's built for speed and work. And they all go round now to parade before the judge, who will decide her best of group and reserve. Six great hounds, no doubt about that. This is a wonderful group, a group of great quality.
There's the Afghan helm. And it's won it. Chris Amu has won the group with the Afghan helm. And the crowd are wild about that one. A great choice. And the reserve goes to the Whippet. The Whippet is reserved. So the Afghan hound stands there. Uh, the Afghan hound last won a Best in Shirt Crufts in 1983. There's the Whippet. There are the trophies. Oh, a great couple of dogs there. Again, excellent representatives of their breed. The Afghan hound, best of group at Crofts, winner of the hound group, and the Whippet Reserve. Lovely head, and I adore that beard. There are so many other exciting events here at Crofts. Demonstrations, obedience competitions, and the agility that we see here. The dog going on the seesaw, over the jumps, and through the slalom. And you can see the agility competition next Sunday on BBC Two. And you'll see dogs going up, along, and down, over the well, and an occasional crash landing. This is the moment we've all been waiting for. Best in show at Crufts, 1987. Six dogs, the group winners, before the judge, Mr. Bill Pinches. He examines the Afghan hound first of all. And this Afghan is improving each time it comes into the show ring. Look at that movement, great movement. The Afghan hound champion, Viscount Grant, owned and handled by Chris Amu, the lead singer of the pop group, The Real Thing. Its pet name is Gable. It's previously won a hound group, two years old and the top winning Afghan currently, and it won last year's Pup of the Year. The Doberman, champion Salates Ferris, winner of the working group, nearly two years old. He's previously won a working breeds championship best in show. He gained his champion's title at the age of 14 and a half months, making him the youngest Doberman champion ever. Professionally handled here for his owner by Graham Hunt. His name at home is Khan and he lives near Heathrow Airport. Khan has the company of two more Dobermans at home, and he lives with three young children who are responsible for his care. The proud father of six litters of puppies, and no doubt they're all proud of their dad today. There's the Doberman, always a popular winner of crafts. Looking very smart. The judge will be pleased with that performance. And the winner of the gun dog group, the flat coat uh, retriever, champion border cot guy. And what a great guy he is. Did you ever see a happier dog? He's won 21 major championship awards, and this is the third year in succession that he's won best dog in the flat coat retriever classes. He's got a show champion mother and father, and he's got a champion sister. He's won his title of champion outside in field trials, as well as inside at dog shows. He lives at home in Suffolk with another flat coat retriever and four Shetland sheepdogs. Beautiful dog, teeming with quality and great condition, very happy. He's laughing all the time. There's the flat coat retriever. He must be considered for top place. Toy group winner was the Bichon Frise, Irish and English champion Theo Pepe Mad Louis at Pamplona. And his owner told me he lives up to his name. He's Mad Louis at home. 19 challenge certificates. It takes just three to become a champion, remember. It's a record for the breed. Sired six litters and already has a champion son, so he's passing his quality on to his progeny. Professionally handled here by Jeff Corrish. His breeder is a famous poodle breeder. And he lives with two other Bichon Frise and three standard poodles. And he was black the day before he won the toy group because he loves to roll in holes in the garden. He's now got to behave himself. He's in the big ring at Crufts and he's got a chance for supreme champion. And his owner told me he's just refused an offer of £15,000 from an American buyer. Louis is simply not for sale. The Wire Fox Terrier, champion Killick of the mess, He's uh, two years old, his father was a champion, 
and he's won 17 challenge certificates. Best in show three times last year at championship shows and five group wins to his name as well. One of the top winning dogs from last year. Professionally handled by Lynn Snow, the Mrs. Baxter of London. His pet name is Trevor and he's signed two litters already. A real terrier in spirit is Trevor. Looking at the other dogs, but being kept well away from them. That tail shows his spirit. He's very happy here at Crufts. And he should be. He's got a good chance. The wire fox terrier. The winner of the utility group, the Shih Tzu, champion Harapine Chaka Khan Antarctica. Just over two years old, he's won six challenge certificates and he started his winning ways as a young puppy. And he's the 39th champion owned by his handler here, Mrs. Rawlings. He lives with 14 other Shih Tzus at home and to get him to the immaculate condition you see here, he isn't bathed. Mrs. Rawlings told me that she dry cleans him. Bathing would evidently spoil the texture of his coat. The utility group win was Khan's first, but his owner has won two groups at Crufts before with different dogs. There's the Shih Tzu. And that completes Bill Pinch's first look at these dogs. And it's tense now because... My God, you're brave, Bill. Show now and you have a chance. Fidget, it, you could be lost. And Bill Pinches calls out two dogs, the Afghan Hound and the Wire Fox Terrier. Now this may indicate that he, he might choose his best in show from one of these two. He could still be looking at the others. Everyone must keep showing all the time. You don't know what will happen until the last moment. There's the Wire Fox Terrier being very firmly handled by Bill Pinches. That African is a beautiful dog. Excellent show dog. In fine condition and coat. Now who will it be? Well, it's tense, and it's anybody's guess. Two great champions. Which one will it be? The crowd will be pleased with either... It's the Afghan Hound! And he's carried. He's carried on to his platform. The Afghan Hound has won again at Crufts. 1983 was the first Afghan to win Crufts and the Wire Fox Terrier super And a parade of honor, a lap of honor now for these two dogs. The crowd wild. There's your best in show at Crufts, the Afghan Hound. It's a worthy winner. Happy, tail raised, head raised. You couldn't wish for a best winner the 1987 Crufts Dog Show. And that wire, beautiful. And the trophy is being presented by Linda Beek, a distinguished dog judge. Chris Amu will be very happy with that win. A marvellous win. Everybody Chris, very happy. Chris, many, many congratulations. Thanks, Dennis. How do you feel this moment? I don't know. <laughs> I honestly don't know. It feels great. Did you think you would win? I, no, I had no idea. Honestly, no idea whatsoever. How how are you going to celebrate? God, anything I can do, I'm going to do. Believe me. Now, now you're, you're the lead singer of a pop group. Do you feel like singing now? Not really. <laughs> I just feel like getting something down me. My throat is really dry, and that's all I want to do. Loads of champagne and celebrate. That's it. Many thanks, Chris. Well Thank done. You. Congratulations. Thanks.